more than 800 days of conflict, an unprecedented crisis, a heartbreaking human tragedy. Inside Syria, death, damage, and destruction on a horrific scale. Homes, hospitals, schools, and people have all been targeted. The rate of deterioration is staggering. A year ago, one million people needed humanitarian assistance. Now, over 6.8 million do. That's every third Syrian. Outside Syria, there are now 1.6 million refugees. By December, the number is expected to climb to 3.5 million. At this rate, by the end of the year, half the population of Syria will be displaced or needing humanitarian assistance. That's over 10 million people. 200,000 refugees flood in every month. By the end of the year, the population of Lebanon will have increased by 25%. The Zaatari refugee camp in Jordan is now the second largest in the world. Countries in the region are buckling under the pressure of the influx. Children have suffered the most. A generation of Syrian children growing up traumatized. Many have not gone to school in more than two years, and worse, they have been witnesses to horrors children should never see. A funding appeal launched in December 2012 brought help to millions in and outside Syria. But by March 2013, the needs outpaced the funds raised. To do more now, more is needed. Assistance must urgently reach all Syrians in need, including inside the country. Humanitarian agencies need over $4 billion to help Syrians inside and outside Syria. This is the largest humanitarian appeal ever. Two years into the crisis, for a people exposed and vulnerable, for host countries struggling to cope, for humanitarian agencies working to alleviate the suffering. An unprecedented appeal reaching out to governments, corporations, business, and private donors to think hard, dig deep, and do more for the victims of this merciless conflict. I was very impressed by two situations, or three. First, it was very uh, full of hope to see women working for their own empowerment, working to be themselves, working so that their daughters can have a better life, a better future. In them, you see hope. At the same time, when I went to the shelters, I have to tell you that, thanks God, it's a solution that shows you we're only, this is only a step. There's many steps to go on. Shelters make people sad. It's a solution that uh, really, I know it's needed, but it's real sad to see people living in shelters. And at the same time, I have to be to tell you that I'm very, very impressed with the registration center in Tripoli. I think that organization achieved by UNHCR is admirable. The order, the way people function, the way people receive the refugees, the faces of the refugees when they're inside, I think that has to be shown to the world. That's a real, real way to work. For example, yesterday, 990 people were registered in Tripoli. That's a lot. Just, just to tell you the dimension of the problem, 990 were registered in Tripoli yesterday. Only in Tripoli. It's just... Well, here you constantly hear stories about many things. But what most moves me is not having an answer on what's going to happen tomorrow. So that's why we have to be aware of the situation. When you don't have an answer of what's going to happen tomorrow, life loses its 
pleasure.